This is a lesson on the polarization of light in a light and optics unit. In a prior lesson, I had talked about the electric and magnetic fields of an electromagnetic wave, how there is a magnetic field and an electric field, and that these are perpendicular to each other as well as the direction of light. And so when we're looking at the electromagnetic field, what polarization is, is the direction of the electric field oscillation. And notice here, uh, it oscillates upward here and downward here. So when we note, when we have a representation, indicate the direction of polarization, we're going to do that with a double pointed arrow up and down because that is the direction that the electric field oscillates is all the way up and all the way down. So we can see in this light wave, the uh, electric field oscillates in what looks like the standard Y direction. The electric field could oscillate in any direction, any angle in the 360 degrees around that axis it could oscillate in. It could be in this direction, it could be in this direction, etc. So that's the polarization of light. That's the definition of polarization of light. And polarization of light, because you can see it's the direction of the electric field, you can imagine that the polarization relates to the magnitude of that electric field and also to the energy of the light. Electric field, we know this is true. The intensity, the pointing vector, equals the energy density times the uh, speed of light, epsilon naught e rms squared. So we're seeing that the intensity of light, so we're going to remember that the electric field is related to the intensity. There's different types of polarization. Um, there's an animation here, which I'll talk about in a second, but it'll really draw your eye, right? Uh, the types of polarization, the first very basic one is unpolarized, which does not mean that there's no polarization. All it means is it's polarized in all directions. And I have that picture up here. This is how we represent it. We call this random polarization. It's sort of like raw light. If you think about light coming from the sun, it has polarization in all directions. There's no reason why those electric fields would all be aligned with one another. So, so this is how we represent the electric field being in all directions. That's what this means, is electric field in all directions. Once the light has been polarized, we can say it's been linearly polarized. If I isolate that electric field, and that's what I saw in the previous example here, if I isolate the electric field in one dimension, we just have linearly polarized light. This is the direction of polarization, and it's perpendicular to where the light is moving. The last type of polarization that I'll mention is circularly polarized, which is actually related to elliptically polarized as well. And that means that the polarization rotates left-handed or right-handed around the direction of propagation. And you can see that here. If you look at this light wave coming at you, you will see that the electric field either moves in a clockwise fashion around the axis or in a counterclockwise. And so that's what we call right-handed or left-handed rotation in circularly polarized light. I'm not going to study this. I'm going to focus on the random polarization and the linear polarization. And if you'd like to pursue circularly polarized light, you can do that on your own. So how do we create polarization? That's a really good question. And the answer to that is to pass light through a substance that allows the electric field in only one direction to get through. And that's why I've chosen this picture here. I like the gate, this fence picture here. If I have a rope and I just shake a rope, and you can see that down in the bottom here, this picture from OpenStax, and Hewitt had a very similar picture here. Um, uh, and the model is to shake a rope up and down and let that be the direction of the electric field oscillation. And if we set up a fence, only the rope that oscillates along the direction of those open spots in that fence is going to get through. If I try to do it in the other direction, you can see that here or here, the wave does not get through that opening. And so that's how we create polarized light, is we orient some sort of linearly slotted substance 
with the light waves. We call this a polarizing filter, a polarizer, an analyzer. There could be crystals. Mica is often used to create some sort of polarization. And so here's the picture here that we have. We send in this raw, unpolarized light here, right? It's polarized in all direction. We send it through a polarizing filter, and what happens is the light that comes out is only along the transmission axis. That's what we call that, the transmission axis. Uh, or what I, um, I'll use TA maybe on a diagram, transmission axis. Only the electric field along that transmission axis will get passed through. And what I'm going to note here, and why I was mentioning the pointing vector and intensity on the previous slide, is that we're losing electric field. Any part of this electric field that is not aligned along this axis actually gets absorbed. And so we're losing intensity. We're losing energy of that light wave. It used to have electric field in all dimensions. It had a large electric field. And that electric field has been reduced to just this one dimension. So we're losing intensity. So how do we quantify that intensity? We must consider the types of polarization that happens. So the first thing that can happen is if the light is initially unpolarized. If I just have raw, unpolarized light, natural light, and I send it through a polarizing filter, well, it turns out if I have an even distribution of all the electric fields in all the directions, half of it's lost, right? Half of it is perpendicular to that transmission axis and the other half is parallel and only the portion that is parallel gets transmitted through and that's half of it. So if you have initially unpolarized light, they may say natural light, that's another term for it. If you send it through a polarizer, you lose half of it. And so your intensity is reduced. Uh, if you know the suck equation, uh, you can also figure out the reduction in that electric field. And um, remember, the energy is ERMS squared. So if you have the intensity, then you're going to quarter the electric field, right? There's that squared value in there. Uh, so that's initially if it's unpolarized. What if it's already polarized? What if I send this piece of light through another polarizing filter? Well, we need to take into account that angle between the incoming light and the polarizing, the transmission axis of that polarizing filter. And so we see here, here's the original light, and I know it's a little bit maybe harder to discern, so that's why I'll highlight here. Here's the original light. This is the original light wave here. And what we can do, because it's a vector, right, electric field's a vector, I can divide this vector into a component parallel to the transmission axis and a component perpendicular to the transmission axis. And what we know based on our model is this perpendicular component will not pass through the transmission axis. What passes through is only the, per the parallel part, right? Which we see if we know this angle theta is the cosine, the, the adjacent side, right? Trigonometry, this is the E cosine, the original electric field E and then we're taking the parallel component, which is the cosine of it. And that's the only portion that passes through. Intensity is related to the electric field squared, and so we can see that if I want to find the new intensity, this is the new intensity, it's a smaller intensity, I'm going to take the original intensity and multiply by cos squared, and that angle theta is defined to be the angle between the polarization of the incoming light and the transmission axis of the polarizer. And I have this down here, be careful, the angle given in the problem may not be the angle that you actually want to use. They might give some other angle. So when you're looking at this angle in here, make sure you very specifically located the angle between the electric field and the transmission axis, right? The transmission axis here. And when I'm going to do some problems in another lesson and I can show that I'm very um, particular about drawing that and making sure I've identified it well. This is called the Malice Law. And so let's apply this law to a couple of just qualitative examples here to get the idea of how it works. 
Um, here I have a situation where I have natural light. I send it through a polarizing filter. And then I send that light through another polarizing filter. Notice that the transmission axis is rotated from this one. So I would go like this. Here's the electric field. And then here's the transmission axis here. And that angle theta is in here. And I will get a reduced electric field. Notice that this vector, this last vector, I would call this E0, E1, and E2. We can see that E1 is greater in magnitude than E2. And of course, E1 is only one component, half of this natural light. So that's how to look at light that's just coming through at some angle. We could have a case, here's another example, we could have a case where we send that natural light through a polarizing filter and then we have another polarizing filter where the axis is oriented in the same direction and what we're going to get in this situation is that these two are equal. There's no further reduction in intensity. This light can make it through that polarizing filter so we're going to have no loss in intensity there. The last example I chose is if we take that polar, that last polarizing filter and we orient it perpendicularly, there's a 90 degree angle between the electric field, this E1, that came through that first transmission axis. If I have this second transmission axis oriented at a 90 degree to it, remember cos of 90 degrees is zero. And this is a situation where we get zero light out. There's no light drawn here because there's none that's coming out. This is how sunglasses work, uh, especially with glare. Uh, what we do is we know the orientation of the electric field of the polarization of light outside. You can take the lens of the sunglasses and orient it perpendicularly to that light, especially with glare, and then you can completely block that light. That's how glare reduction glasses work, is to just orient that transmission axis perpendicularly to the polarization of the light you want to block. Very fascinating. Again, I've left example problems for this concept in further lessons.